Hello, Rebecca McLaughlin here, young adult author of Nameless Queen, out now in stores slash the internet. Now recently I hosted a Twitter chat for the debut authors of 2020, and I got to come up with a bunch of questions about time management and deadlines. I picked the theme mostly because I wanted other people's insight and opinions and just how they handle time management and deadlines. It is something that transcends writing and authoring and books and jobs and it's your whole life. And I thought I would share mine here. So there's something like 11 or 12 questions about time management and deadlines and I'm gonna see how many I get through in this video. Question one, how long did it take you to finish your book? Now this extends from when you started writing the book to when you finished the first draft all the way to when you stopped working on the final draft. So my story uh, briefly, uh, starts in late 2014 with National Novel Writing Month. The first draft took me about three, two and a half to three months to write. I then proceeded to work on revisions on my own and then with my agent and editor for another four years after that. Uh, until early 2019, I believe. So from start to finish, I started the book in 2014 and it is published here in 2020. So that's just about five years from, in from inception to publication. Question number two, what are some things that I have learned about time management, such as tips and tricks from the process of writing and publishing a novel? So the biggest thing I learned about time management is that you have to literally actually manage your time. Um, for a very long time writing and writing books, I would just write whenever I had time. I'd write while I was at lunch at the office. I would write when I got home on the weekends and I didn't really manage my time. I just kind of spent it. But then I would run out of time for social activities or my time at my day job would bleed over into the evenings and I would run out of time to work on my book. So time management is something I learned how to do, like at all. Uh, and it really has a lot to do with paying attention to where you're spending your time, how you're spending your time and planning for it. So in some ways I tried to set aside a chunk of time every day to work on my writing, but I also didn't punish myself for missing time because I have a full-time job and other obligations. And then I would try to catch up on that on the weekends. Question number three. A lot of stories rely on a ticking clock, aka something that puts the story in a crunched time frame and offers tension. So the ticking clock for Nameless Queen uh, is something called the Assassin's Festival. So how magic works in this story is that uh, when the coin finds the magic crown tattoo on her arm, she her powers will build over the course of six weeks. And at the end of those six weeks, she will be at her strongest and weakest. Her powers will have reached their full potential, but also on that day is the only day she can peacefully give away the tattoo to someone else. Otherwise, anyone on that day can kill her and take it. Ugh. Very stressful, not great. So on this day is something called the Assassin's Festival, which is something historically that the city has held on that day for every sovereign. And it's called the Assassin's Festival because typically someone will assassinate the sovereign to try to steal their magic. And the way that the sovereigns dealt with this is creating the festival so that people can sign up to duel the heir. And if they win, the understanding is that the tattoo will be given away peacefully instead of needing bloodshed. Coin, our main leading character with the crown tattoo, is obviously not super excited about this festival. Question number four, how do you cope with an upcoming deadline? Like this. Ah! So coping strategies for me for deadlines include making sure that there aren't other things in my life that are gonna try to steal my attention away because in that week or two weeks or days or hours leading up to the deadline, I need to be able to focus all of my time and energy and thoughts into the project so that I can get it done on time and give it the attention that it deserves. Hopefully I've been doing this for a long time up until the deadline, but we all know how deadlines work. I try not to schedule anything for that time period, um, and I try to make sure that I have easily accessible, low preparation food on hand that isn't too unhealthy, so that I can make sure to feed myself and nourish myself during that time frame without falling on unhealthy habits like fast food takeout or just salty, salty, salt foods, salt. Question number five. What part of your story did you spend the most time revising or writing? So for me, I spent a lot of time revising the story as a whole. 
um, and most of those revisions had to do with some plot elements. So the character arc, the themes explored, those never really changed. But who was involved and what exactly was happening in the story to facilitate those changes did change a lot. So huge chunks of the middle of the story changed pretty often and in big ways. That's where I spent most of my time in revisions. Question number six. There are two given classes of writers, typically. Pantsers, which are those who just dive into a story and figure it out as they go, and plotters, those who plot and plan before they start. Which camp do you fall into, or both? So I have had a journey from pantsing to plotting, and pantsing is like flying by the seat of your pants. Pantsing as a verb, just FYI. So I've gone through a journey of becoming a plotter over time, and part of that has to do with the fact that for my second novel, Under Contract, I had to pitch it to my editor and get them to accept it. I had to create a page synopsis, and then I had to create an outline. Uh, and they had to approve all of those things before I was able to start writing it. So I was kind of forced into the plotting camp. But what I learned from that was how helpful and useful plotting is. Fun fact, it's really useful to know what you want to do before you start doing it. Now, I don't think I could have done that earlier in my writing career, like the first couple books I've written, because I just didn't know enough about plot and story structure. I didn't have enough experience for that to really be as valuable. I had to just dive in and find my way through. So it's been an area of growth for me. And there is an element that you kind of still like to improvise um, and go on impulse while you're writing, and that's totally fine. And you can still do that with an outline. An outline is just sort of having bumper rails, guardrails, to help you get to the right place at the end. Question number seven. What is the most useful or weird way that you have managed your time or tracked your time? I have recently joined the bandwagon of people who are obsessed with dot journals. And in my dot journals, I like to create calendars. And in those calendars, I like to track how much time I spend writing every day and how many words I write or delete or revise or pages sometimes as well. And what this does for me is it shows me how efficient my time writing is. Fun fact, I get more done per hour during the week than I do on a weekend. Uh, just because of the amount of focus I have to have to get something done on a weekday when I have a day job. But I do get more overall done on the weekends just because of the higher amount of time I can spend on it. Question number eight. What has been the most time consuming part of writing, revising, and publishing your book? So for me, as mentioned, revision. Revision took years for me, whereas drafting, the first draft took like two or three months you know, maybe part of the fact that it took me so long to revise is because I drafted so quickly. But in all honesty, um, revi revising is writing. It's just a different kind of writing than drafting. So it's all something that I'm learning to love in different strides. There are, of course, holdups in the publishing process. So for example, after I got my book deal, it took eight months for them to come to terms with the new contract before I could even start working with my editor. So a lot of times you'll hit sort of walls of waiting that you don't really get a say in in publishing and you just sort of have to keep working on something else, work on your own, or just find a way to make it through. Question number nine. What is the fastest paced part of your story if it's not giving away spoilers? I love to do scene writing as opposed to summary. So my instinct when I write is for scene, 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 and not a lot of summary. So first drafts often take place over a very short period of time. Um, Nameless Queen, for example, the very first draft took place in like, I want to say four days. Motorcycle doesn't factor into this, but it did distract me. Um, and then through revisions, it got up to six weeks so that the characters had more time to grow, more time to spend with each other, more time to adjust to their changes in their life and circumstances. And I think that really helped the book overall. Uh, but still, I think probably the fastest paced part of the story is probably the climax. So near the end of the story, things pick up and the whole scene at the Assassin's Festival we get to see and uh, it moves pretty quickly. Question number 10. How do you handle creative burnout? From constant writing, revising, writing, revising, marketing, business, whatever, all of those things, how do you not just fizzle into nothing? How do you keep yourself alert, active, inspired? I will let you know when I figure this out. Um, I think lately, to some detriment, I've been working a bit more slowly than I'm used to. I don't obsess over my story as much. I am spending more time socializing and relaxing and trying to have a better balance. 
and it is resulting in some slower progress, but the progress isn't worse. It's just a little slower. Also, when I have control over my own schedule, I set aggressive deadlines, but realistic deadlines. So I like to work aggressively, but I'm trying to be more realistic with what I can get done in a certain amount of time. And being honest with myself about my life work balance and my mental and social and physical health. All right, the last question number 11. I don't have that many fingers, that's fine. So question 11 is, what advice do you have for people who stress out about the pressure to be productive at all times, to be successful as early as possible, and to be productive constantly and successful constantly? So my, my best advice here, and I could do a whole video about it, is to make sure to have realistic expectations about what success looks like and what you're willing to do and give of yourself to get there. Because healthy success looks in part like healthy work habits. Having a successful career is only successful if it's sustainable, which means it has to be healthy for you. And you have to understand what success looks like in your business. So it's really easy to look at those big successful people in your business, like JK Rowling and Stephen King, and feel this pressure about that's what success looks like. And that's not what success looks like. And you sort of have to define it for yourself, but realistically speaking, most writers have a second job, a day job, in addition to author, and they have to strike a personal balance between those jobs and all of the other things in their life and how they like to spend their time. And so for me, success looks like publishing a book, but then also publishing more books. And I don't need to be a crazy wild seller. I don't need to be crazy wild, like critically acclaimed but I wanna to write to entertain. I wanna write so that I enjoy it and other people enjoy it. I wanna push myself creatively and challenge myself and learn new things and try new things. I wanna become a better person and a better author and accomplishing and growing through all of those things, that's what success looks like to me. So I strongly, strongly encourage you to understand what success looks like in general for the business you're going into, for the career you're choosing, and to have realistic expectations for yourself because only two people are JK Rowling and Stephen King. No one else is. And if that's how you define success, you'll never get there. So be kind and generous to yourself and with others. All right, so that's all I have for you today. Those are the answers to the 11 questions that I posed over on Twitter. You can go check it out on Twitter through the hashtag Roaring Twenties Debut and hashtag Author Chat, specifically on my profile to find those questions. And you can see who answered those questions among the other 2020 debuts. There's some great advice out there that I will be taking to heart. So I selfishly wrote those questions so that others would answer them and I would get good advice, but also it's out there for you as well. All right, so thanks so much for tuning in. I appreciate it, and I appreciate you. Here's a video that YouTube thinks that you'll like, and here's my most recent upload. I put out videos about every Saturday about writing, my process, publishing, etc. It has been a pleasure to share these questions and answers with you. I will see you next time. Bye!